Hi, so for today's topic, we'll be having CPS scheduling algorithm. So basically, lecture number four covers a uh, CPU scheduling algorithm. So nandito na lahat ng eight na common CPU scheduling algorithm na ginagamit ni computer system. So ano ba tong purpose ng mga algorithm na to? Okay. So technically, ginagamit natin yung mga CPU scheduling algorithm for our computer system para malaman niya sino ba or alimbang process yung ipaprocess ng CPU natin at a, at a certain period of time. Okay? So, pwede kasing mangyari, maraming kasing scenario na halimbawa, at same instance, so parehong pareho uh, na-activate or dumating yung isang process. Paano malalaman ngayon ni CPU sino yung ipaprocess niya and sino yung maghihintay ng mga process? Okay. So basically, we have eight common algorithms na ginagamit. Okay. So to name the few, so we have first come, first serve. So we have round robin. We have multi-level queue and then so on. Okay. Lahat ng mga algorithms na to, meron silang kanya-kanyang mga criteria para mag-decide sino ba yung process ko. Okay. So for today, uh, for today's topic, so we'll be having the most simplest one, so yung pinakamadali lang muna, whereas ang tawag natin sa kanya is first come, first serve algorithm, or commonly known as FCFS. Ay. So again, so we'll be discussing first come, first serve algorithm. And then, this algorithm will have or will consider arrival time as its criteria. And then, so first come, first serve ay non-preemptive priority algorithm. So, ano ba yung non-preemptive and preemptive algorithm? So, I differentiate natin yung dalawa before we go with the example. So, basically, pag sinabi nating non-preemptive algorithm, Ito yung mga process na pag pumasok na siya within the CPU, pag pinaprocess na siya, kailangan niyang maubos lahat ng burst time. O sa so, ibig sabihin, kailangan siyang matapos hanggang dulo. Okay? Whereas naman, yung preemptive type na algorithm, yung ginagawa nito is that once na nasa CPU na siya and currently pinaprocess na siya, pwede siyang maalis within the CPU. Bakit? Kasi may darating na mas higher priority algorithm kaysa sa kanya. Okay? So with that, iintayin niya kailan uli siya pwedeng mapumasok and then tsaka siya ipaprocess. Okay? So yun yung difference ng dalawa. Through examples, makikita natin ano yung difference ng uh, preemptive sa kanan preemptive But for first come, first serve, for SJF and non-preemptive priority, Ang ginagamit nila is non-preemptive. Okay, so let's have a simple example. Ay, so this will be our given. So we have here five processes. So ibig sabihin, ito yung mga task or mga job na ibibigay natin kay CPU. Okay, yan yung T. So ito. So we have process 1 hanggang process 5. Next one na makikita natin is we have the arrival time. So, na bang ibig sabihin ng arrival time? Ito yung time na nakreate yung isang process. Okay? And the next one, we have here the burst time. So, ibig sabihin, gano'ng katagal ipaprocess ni CPU yung isang process. Okay? So, simulan na natin. So, in this case, gagawin natin, we'll be creating a Gantt chart. Okay? So, anong purpose ni Gantt chart? Para makita natin sunod-sunod, sino yung mga ipaprocess niya. Okay? So, always yung Gantt chart natin, nag-start yun at time zero. So, start tayo. Okay. So, this will be our Gantt chart. And then, sabi natin, mag-start yan at time zero. Okay? So, start siya at time zero. So, technically, kailangan mong tingnan. Meron bang mga process dito na nag-arrive nag at time zero? Okay, bakit again tayo nag refer sa arrival time? Kasi as we can see here, ang ginagamit na kriteria ni first come, first serve is arrival time. Okay, kailangan mo tingnan. 
Meron bang process dito na nag-arrive or na-initiate or na-create nung time zero? Okay? So, technically, merong process na dumating at time zero. So, sino yun? So, sulat natin sa baba as our guide. So, ang process na dumating ay si P4. Ayan. So, si P4. Now, kailangan mong tingnan, gano'n ba karami yung burst time or gano'n katagal ipoprocess si CP4. So, technically, si P4 ay merong 7 na burst time. So, lagay natin sa gun chart natin. So, eto si P4. So, pinaprocess na siya kasi wala namang ibang process. And then, dahil non-preemptive priority, si first come, first serve, kailangan ubusin niya lahat yung burst time. So, si P4... Matatapos to at time 7. Bakit time 7 again? Nag-start siya time 0. Inubos na lahat ng burst time. Nag-end siya ng time 7. Now, kailangan mong tingnan ngayon dun sa mga natitirang process. Okay? Dahil naubos na natin yung burst time ni P4, pwede na natin siyang eliminate ngayon. Okay? Now, kailangan mong tingnan, meron bang mga process na dumating in between from 0 to 7? Meron bang process na dumating? So, as we can see here, we have P1. Si P1, dumating siya at time 3. And also, si P2. Ayan. So, dumating naman siya nung time 5. So, si P1, dumating banda dito. And si P2, dumating banda dito sa part na to. Okay? Now, Yan. So, currently, kung makikita nyo sa gun chart natin sa baba, so, dito, merong dalawang process ngayon na nagiintay. So, ibig sabihin, itong dalawang process na to ay nasa random access memory natin, or RAM. So, now, dahil pareho silang nasa RAM, dito muna magagamit ngayon yung criteria natin na arrival time. Kailangan mong tingnan sino sa dalawa yung unang dumating. Unang dumating dito ay si P1. So, with that, siya yung una nating ipaprocess. Okay, so we have here P1. And ang burst time niya is 4. So, mag e to at time 11. So, now, tapos na rin si P1. So, eliminate natin siya. Still, yung P2 mo, nandyan pa din. And also, double check mo, ito, si P3 dumating. Okay. Now, ngayon, at time 11, meron ka uling dalawang current na process na nag sa RAM mo. Si P2 and P3. So again, our criteria will be arrival time. Unang dumating si P2 over kay P3. So, ang next natin dito will be P2. P2 natin, ang burst time niya is 9. So, mag e to at time 20. So, at time 20, so yung P2 natin tapos na. Nandito pa rin si P3 kasi hindi pa siya tapos. Also, dumating ngayon si P5. Kasi dumating siya ng time 12. So, banda dito, dumating na siya. Now, between the two, again, we'll be checking yung arrival time. So, unang dumating si P3. So, we'll be having P3. Burst time niya is 4. So, we'll be having 24. Ayan. And then lastly, tapos na si P3. P5 na lang yung natitira. So, process natin si P5. Si P5 ay merong 6 na burst time. So, this will be 30. Now, with this, so ayan, nakita natin na from time 0, Nung natapos lahat i-process ni CPU, lahat ng mga dumating or lahat ng mga job na binigay sa kanya, nag-end siya at time 30. So, ito. Dito natin makikita, using first come, first serve algorithm, paano ba nag-decide si CPU? Okay. Now, so what if pareho sila ng arrival time? Okay. Halimbawa, si P1 at si P2 parehong time 3 dumating. Paano magde-decide si CPU doon? You'll be checking ngayon yung process ID. So, ito. Yung process ID. Yung pinakamababa na process ID, so, siya yung una. So, kung si P1 at P2 ay parehong 3 yung arrival time, mauuna si P1. Okay? So, yun yung 
deciding factor natin. Now, compute naman natin yung uh, waiting time and turnaround time nitong mga process na to. Okay, so after natin makompute ng lahat ng mga to, so pwede na natin malaman yung CPU utilization ng computer system natin. Okay? So ano bang meron sa CPU utilization? So ginagawa nito, inaalam lang kung properly utilized na ba yung isang computer system. So ibig sabihin, pag properly utilized, dapat laging merong ginagawa or pinaprocess yung computer system natin. Okay? So check natin dito. Okay, so formula natin doon is, Summation ng burst time over total end time. So, ito yung pinakadulo ng gun chart. So, pag add-addin natin to lahat, so check natin. Okay. Okay, so this will be 30 over sa pinakadulo, we have here 30 din times 100. So, we have here 100%. Okay. So, dahil kahit tingnan mo pa lang yung gun chart, madaling mong malalaman na 100% yung utilization niya. Paano? Pag nakita mo dito na walang mga idle time yung gun chart mo, or walang putol-putol yung gun chart mo, so most probably, 100% utilization yon. Okay? Next one naman, compute natin yung average turnaround time and average waiting time ng computer system mo. Okay? So, una... Average turnaround time muna. So, compute natin to. So, sum nito over 5 kasi 5 yung process natin. Okay? So, check natin. Okay. So, pag pinag-sum up natin to, so, we have here 64 over 5. Bakit again 5? Kasi 5 to. So, this will be 12.80. Okay? 12.80. So, ano big ibig sabihin nito? So, ibig sabihin ng average turnaround time, ito yung average time na nakukuha ng isang process para ma-process siya from the time of arrival hanggang time of completion. Okay? Average waiting time naman, so sum up natin to lahat. So, this will be 34 over 5. And then, makukuha natin dito ay 6.80. Okay, in-round off ko na lang sa two decimal places para same answer tayo lahat. So, ano mga implication nito? So, ibig sabihin nito, 6.80 yung average time na panag ng process bago siya makapasok sa CPU. Okay? So, that is first come, first serve algorithm. So, I'll be having other examples para makita nyo yung mga other scenarios.